Welcome Zelda 1 Randomizer, hosted by Speed Gaming 2. Tonight we are doing a Rookie Rumble 3 game between the Pirate Sheep and Glitchwraith. This is game 2 of a top 16 battle. With me in the booth today is JXB Adam. How you doing, Adam? Hey, Yaproc. I'm doing wonderful. I don't know if you mentioned our our tracker Camion Rinnakai, but if you didn't, shout outs to Camion. Without trackers, we don't get restreamed, nor can we keep track of what's going on. I see the tracker has been pre marked. Glitch Wraith took game one. It's a win or go home for a pirate sheep, and I'm looking forward to it. Where do you think we're going to start tonight? I think we're probably going to start somewhere near the forest. That's my guess. Okay, I'll just go. Dead woods, then, because it's kind of like the forest, but it's dead. I can totally see that. So, I know that there's a lot of hype around this game. Being a game two, I'm sure that Pirate Sheep does not want to go home. Nope, not at all. And we see we're starting at Monocle Rock. All right, so kind of in the middle, you know, it's a little dead, not quite forest. I'll give that yeah, one to you. It's it's north of the forest now. It's much closer to the forest than the dead woods. <laughs> and quite frankly, that's okay. So chat, a couple of things. What's the first dungeon we are going to find tonight? What's the last dungeon we're going to find tonight? And do you have any questions about the flag set? I don't see any questions, but we do have some predictions for Dungeon 5 first with second last. I like that. I always like to see chat a little bit engaged in, in the uh, races because it's just more fun. Absolutely. We've already seen a door repair or two. Unfortunately, being broke already, we have no idea how much that's going to cost the seed. That's okay. If I can find all my door repairs when I have zero rupees, I am thrilled. And I see Lionel's on the overworld. That's not fun. No. That is all definitely right. not fun. And I do see a question about the flag. So this is the Rookie Rumble 3 flag set, which means we start with the wooden sword. We start with eight bombs. It's a one. It's a first quest overworld, and all all nine dungeons will be shapes. That's right. And we got our first look at the coast item. It is the raft. And a take any for pirate sheep, grabbing a heart. Now, that's not a terrible pickup because we know four hearts are required to get our white sword item, which is forced to be the recorder in this flag set. And if we happen to get to 10 hearts and have found the magical sword, we'll be able to pick that up. Exactly, and there is a wood sword cave with a free candle if they're able to find it quickly enough. Yeah, that's one of those things in this flag set. Uh, if you can, if you route around and you can hit a lot of places where you're not going by, like walking by burn bushes a bunch, then that's a great thing to do. Otherwise, if you're going to be routing through all of the burnable things, you'll want a candle so that you don't have to read like double over your steps. And it looks like Glitch Wraith is just honing in, trying to find the Armos item, which looks like it'll be up at uh, the Grave Armos tonight. That is correct. I had my hopes up that it'd be Death Armos, just because Death Armos is always fun. But I am disappointed. See a 39 medium secret tonight. That's actually a really good medium secret. Only one off the maximum that it can roll of 40. And we did see a, a shop, although I didn't notice any particularly good prices in it. And there's a four ruby small secret. The large secret will be the king or the whammy. We're going to have to just wait and find out as soon as we get one. Unfortunately, Pirate Sheep finds another door repair, loses their precious five rupees. That's okay. Like I was saying before, if you can get those door repairs when you're very low on rupees, then that's going to be helpful. And level seven is the first level found tonight. Yeah. 
And it looks like Artorius is our winner who guessed level 7 being first. That is amazing. Plus two internet points to Artorius. And another question, can both our runners screen scroll? Well, I've seen Glitchwraith do a left to right screen scroll. I'm pretty sure both of them can clip. Uh, block clip, that is, at least for simple block clips. And I would be very surprised if Pirate Sheep can't screen scroll. Uh, the right to left screen scroll being the more difficult of the two. I would agree with that. So, you know, whether we see any ladder clips or HUD clips, that's anyone's guess at this point. Well, we got to find a ladder first before we can clip with it. And the bomb wall to the north doesn't open. Glitch Wraith versus the Dodongo. Glitch Wraith 1, Dodongo 0. And we go north and find a Dig Dogger. I'd be surprised if Glitch Wraith doesn't try a pirouette. There he goes. Opens up that door to the north. Also, uh, it's... It's, and now I'm going to butcher another name because I'm great at butchering names. Avrasados, who gets the two internet points, stealing them from Artorios because it was actually Avrasatos that uh, called level seven first. Oh, gotcha. I didn't see that door repair. It's probably either 24 or 25. Chat, did you catch it? Ooh, if it's in the 20s, that's an unfortunate door repair, but I did see the blue ring at 237 rupees and an arrow at 1Q5. Uh, the arrows did roll up. I believe they were 89 rupees. And by arrows, of course, I mean wooden arrows. Here's level 9 at the top of the waterfall. Oh, boy. Well, that's one of those spots that you want to route early, just to see if there's anything interesting. Although, it will make it very interesting trying to route back when they need it. All depends on if there's another dungeon really close by, because I'm pretty sure in the travels they are going... Both of our runners will find a, uh... What are those things called again? Oh yeah, the recorder, the so road. that we can toot yeah. around. and. And here's the any roads as well. And we did see a candle pick up from Glitch Wraith from a take any. A good call because again, as you're walking through the forest, now you can be checking the spots as opposed to walking by them and needing to come back. Just setting yourself up to cost time. We see pirate sheep up on Death Mountain. First, look at the hints and those are some expensive hints. About 140 yeah. rupees for all of them. That's a lot of rupees when you're only getting them 40 at a pop on the mediums. And we still haven't seen a large secret, though. And 68, can 68 rupees for the candle at 1Q2. That has the potential to be our rare shop tonight. It also had 38 bombs. That's painful. Well, I know one thing I wouldn't be buying this seed. Hopefully our runners can count to 10. That is surprisingly difficult. Yes, it is. I always fail at keeping my counts in check. So and... I've heard the streamers call it out because they will just uh, naturally say what their counts are as again, uh, Pirate Sheep finding the second hints up on Death Mountain um, pretty sure Glitch Wraith just got an Armos item. I didn't it see what was, it is, but it, it was is silver. Oh boy, chat. No silvers hunt today. And, and I, level 8. And with Pirate Sheep but, just being a screen away, I don't think we're going to see any wood arrows. No, I believe both, uh, both of them have picked up the uh, silver arrows. So if either of them chooses to purchase the wooden arrows, that's just a donation to the shopkeeper. Which, unfortunately, I've done a time or two. 
Yep, here's another level, level six. So we have found seven, eight, and six, the three best dungeons to find first if you're rooting for some pain and misery in the seed. So as I was saying, chat, when I'm playing, what you'll notice is my council sounds something like this. Count is one, count is zero, count is one, count is two, count is zero, count is zero, count is zero, because I get hit a lot in this game. You're sounding just like me, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Proc. And it looks like we have Wizrobes in level six. That's a little vanilla-like, and look at those bombs off of the Vires. We're seeing some pretty deep exploration in 8 from Glitch Wraith. Yeah, level 8, uh, two items in the stairs, a heart container on the floor, and that's a lot of bunnies. It would be unfortunate that... if the bow were under that block. It is. Now, I personally subscribe to camp never 7, never 8, so I would have just beelined it right for that Triforce, having picked up the compass. But that's probably why I don't usually win. Well, not digging level 7, I can understand. Level 8, here's the book. Now this early, the book is an atlas. That is all the maps. Now Glitchwraith is going to know which walls might open with a bomb. But I, I do agree with you. The I tend to avoid the larger dungeons where possible. Um, and the way I choose which ones to dig is based on the enemy sets. If I see whiz robes, I avoid them. If I see a nice friendly enemy set, which this level eight appears to have, that's not too bad to dig and could potentially produce uh, several advantages. Speaking of advantages, Glitchwraith has found the first bomb upgrade of the evening, 117. Uh, that's pretty deep in level 8, and we are nowhere near 117 rupees in. Hello, Patra. Goodbye, Patra. We do see an up and A from Pirate Sheep, who is headed back up into the Lock Hill. Yep, I think this is the way to the Inny Roads up here. Pirate Sheep would do very good to wander down into the forest and end up at uh, at 1Q2, where we know a 68 rupee candle is just waiting to be purchased. Oh, but no, he has his eye on the hints. Play a melody to obtain the magic key. Level 4 with the magical boomerang. Unfortunately, we're not going to see that third hint. And we see Glitch Wraith using some door strats on these caffeinated land molas. And of course, Pirate Sheep, expertly knowing, get the hints, and then retry to get the rupees back. And here's the recorder for Pirate Sheep. We know that that recorder will eventually lead to a magical key somewhere. Will it be Recorder Lake? Will it be Dig Dogger Blocked? We just don't know yet. Why not a dungeon under a Recorder Lake and a Dig Dogger Block of the item in the dungeon? Because we can do these things. Exactly, although I might have to throw a Goma blocking the way to the Dig Dogger just to be fun. Here's level five on the coast, and if there's a Goma blocking it, then you could potentially see some some hint shenanigans like, you know, play a melody to obtain the magical key, fire the arrow to obtain the magical key, in which case you just want to cry. The dongo good hint in level five. That, that is a very good hint. That means it's going to be one of the caves, one of the bomb walls, or a couple of different burn spots, or in the most unfortunate of circumstances, the power bracelet spot. Be 
get our first map. look at level five. Chat, what's that ink bot? It looks suspiciously like a mirror of level three on Glitrace's side. Funny how that happens. And by suspiciously, I mean you can see exactly where level five and level three fit together. And that may have been a Y Force on Pirate Sheep. I'd be surprised if they don't go back in. Yeah, I think Pirate Sheep will probably poke back in, knowing that there's an item in there. It was uh, also very early in the dungeon that that uh, Triforce was obtained. Speaking of early dungeons, we saw a Glitterith in 3. I did not see an item pick up, though. I didn't see anything come out of 3, except Glitterith. Glitterith definitely left level 3. Possible that it was starting out early, uh, might have required a key... Wait a minute, you want that hint, Pirate Chief. Van Handel in the Dead Woods and 80 rupees is our large secret. Ah, chat saying that level 3 is full of whiz robes. Whiz robes, they should all be destroyed. So with finally knowing the large secret, that means that in this seed we have a total of 529 free rupees. I like free money. Unfortunately, However, door repairs are going to take about 220 of those. That's a lot of rupees just going right down the drain. And I just absolutely love the ink block guesses that we get out of chat. I believe this one was for level 5, and that would be Shovel Knight doing a pose that LeBron did during the NBA Finals. Okay. Here's level 1 for Glitch Wraith. Level 1 and level 2, both close to start. That candle coming in huge. Notice how much more knowledge Glitch Wraith has compared to Pirate Sheep. Oh, especially when you throw a ladder in on top of it. Glitterith definitely has the exploration uh, bent advantage in this seed. Having the candle, having the ladder, having the book. Yeah, here's level two for Pirate Sheep. Uh, a pirouette's a bomb wall at the top of the dungeon. Gonna head right on in. There'll be one item on the floor in here and a heart container, as well as a Triforce. And of course, a compass and a map and probably some keys. Don't worry, chat. I know all the things the dungeons can have. And land molas. They have those too. Back to start, pirate sheep goes. And level one also has mummies wrapped in warm, fuzzy blankets that are just looking for hugs. Bunnies and whiz robes and a key block. Glitch Wraith, over 200 rupees, knows where the blue ring happens to be. Will we see a play for that blue ring? There's another shop with a blue ring right at the uh, vanilla start screen. He's got to be eyeing it. If there were a casino nearby, I could probably see him taking one small gamble. Maybe. Gambling with 214 rupees is just asking to lose all your money. Here's some Moldorms for Pirate Sheep. Slashing away at them. Getting a 5 drop and some bombs. May be able to continue in level 2. Glitch Wraith also taking a death to the land molas. If there's one thing that level 2 is not short of, it is bombs. I believe that's the third or fourth room already that dropped. Lots of bombs, but you know what the bombs aren't going to affect? These bunnies. That's right, it was a very cruel... Uh, part of development that they decided that the only things that could hurt them are the wand, arrows, or your stick. 
or playing on an original Famicom and saying any kind of noise into the second controller's microphone. Almost makes me want to start running on a Famicom system. Almost. Almost. Yeah, who this cares bunny about room load only lines? Yeah, only three bunnies. Well, the Famicom also uses a cartridge. Um, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe it uses discs. I don't know. Chat, tell me, what does the Famicom use to play the games? I thought that the Legend of Zelda on it actually used a disc, and that's why it had such slow load times. In the meantime, we do see a heart container pickup for Pirate Sheep. Not bad for three bunnies sorted down, but there's lots more bunnies in here that maybe both of the rooms that I've seen get skipped with bunnies could be drop rooms. And here's some like likes the shield devouring monsters that we just call pancakes to make them seem like they're light and fluffy. As a kid, I always saw them more as lasagna. And, and it's that a second is heart second. container. That's so the that coast heart. The... Exactly. Oh, Patra, Patra, Patra. What a terrible job guarding that Triforce. And Pirate Sheep, Triforce out of level two. Done and moving on. Glitchwraith, having not cleared the three bunny four Bemos room, has not seen the second heart container here in level two. Nope, that second heart container is one room south and east. Grabbing the Triforce, not a bad idea for a refill. Might go back in to fight the bunnies with the beam sword. Might nope. walk away because whenever I say a runner is going to do something, they usually do the opposite. Question in chat, is there anything left in two? No, level two is just two heart containers, which while normally would be considered just horrible uh, and like you spent a lot of time for nothing, because the magical sword is guaranteed at ten hearts, uh, it's not a terrible thing. As Glitchwraith has topped out the wallet, I think I would have made a beeline direct to the uh, wooden sword cave where I know a blue ring awaits. There's the old adage that as soon as you buy the blue ring, you get red, but I will make that trade any day. That's fair. And it looks like it's the letter under Recorder Lake, so the magical key will be logically Dig Dogger blocked. Now it's possible that Dig Dogger could be in a diamond staircase and we might be able to clip around it. We're just gonna have to wait and see. We may not even find the magical key. With the amount of walking that Pirate Sheep is doing, I'm pretty sure they're regretting not picking up a candle by now. Yeah, we know that the uh, candle is not the rare shop, but so far every additional candle shop has been under a burn bush, which is unfortunate for Pirate Sheep. And Glitch leaving money on the table in the southwest corner. Not sure I would do that. Not because my wallet is almost f close to full and I'm almost and I'm practically guaranteed to leave money on the table, but rather it's highly unlikely I'm ever going to be back to that southwest corner. So why not just pick up the rupees now? Exactly, and it may have just been a small four. And we see the potion prices. It's a red night tonight. Pirate sheep picking up a red potion. see Pirate Sheep in level 3 having picked up their candle. So, question in chat, could any be 
any key be in nine with that hint? Yes, the any key could be blocked in level nine. Here's Aquamentis awaits with the ladder. Lich Wraith already knew that one. Play a melody to obtain the boomerang. Thanks, game. Speaking of thanks, game, did you see the whiz robes? I think that's, uh... I think that is what is blocking our, uh... Exploration of three, possibly this key as well. And I've got chat calling out that the bow is ladder blocked, so maybe the other hint was step over the water to reach the bow? Which I think could also mean that you sail to reach the bow. I don't think those hints are separated. Finding the Triforce in level 1. Um, going to pick it up and go back in. I don't blame that move at all. It's always nice to get a refill, especially when you're early in a dungeon. And Ratboy is telling me that if it was a... Um, an item in a dungeon that requires the raft, you will see sail to obtain whatever the item is. I don't know, because the raft is never actually useful. Power, Power bracelet, bracelet in on one. The floor. Yes, sir. And we see where the we're not having the maps is actually hurting pirate sheep using a lot of bombs on walls we know will not open. And there's a Triforce out of level 3 for pirate sheep. see level 5 along the coast. Uh, we've seen that yep. before, but this is Glitrate's first dive in. Absolutely. Having the ladder in hand, we know the raft is on the coast, so it's not like there's any rush to go grab that raft. It's not going to do anything but take up space in the inventory. Chat, name that tune. And Glitchrafe grabbing the Triforce out of level 5. I anticipate we'll go back in. Thirty-eight rupee bomb purchased by Pirate Sheep. Paying the big money for them bombs. That is one nice thing. At least a medium secret will buy a bomb pack, but just barely. Just barely. I believe that was the third large for Pirate Sheep. Yeah, did an immediate save. We'll see if Pirate Sheep routes in uh, possibly other money that might be marked, might consider the blue ring, or might be heading right over here to these hints, which Glitch Wraith already purchased. And there's that bow is ladder blocked. And also the hint of where the ladder is. And that you can kill a dig dogger to get the wooden boomerang, everybody's favorite boomerang sometimes. So I don't know about you, but I really like the play of save scumming the hints, especially when the hints happen to be that close to start. Oh, absolutely. 
especially in a seed where money is not fantastic, you need every rupee you can get. And that is absolutely true. I also think by process of elimination, level 4 is going to be the last level we find tonight. Having seen 6, 7, and 8 early, we know we've seen 1 and 9. I think that's all of them. I believe you are right. We haven't seen any levels in Death Mountain yet. Chat, is that where level 4 lies? Or is it going to be Candle Row? Oh, well, there's... There's levels in Death Mountain. They've been up um, there. I don't recall any being there. Uh, the 8 was at the grave. 9 was in Lost Hills. Hmm. It's okay, Proc. If I'm wrong, it's because I'm old and I forget things quickly. Oh, thanks, Camion. It was level 6 that was up there. I am also old, probably much older than most of the individuals in this community. Alright, Sheep takes an unfortunate death, is going to be pushed back to start. Yeah, I agree with... Avasatos, this community definitely skews old because this is a very old game. And honestly, it has lots of miles left in the tank. Oh, especially with all of the fantastic things that Fred has done building the randomizer. Huge shout out to Fred Coughlin, the creator of the randomizer. Without him, we would all be boring watching reruns of The Office yet again. Nah, we would just be playing vanilla. Vanilla works, right? It does. Looks like Pirate Sheep might be having some IRL issues. I noticed that pause on the emulator. And le what a lovely level 6 that is up in Death Mountain. That looks like a gun turret. Okay, I can see that. I was thinking one of those uh, single-hand pincer ro or uh, welding robots from like a factory. Or single arm type thing. And it looks like Pirate Sheep is back with us. Well, I will always say real life comes before Zelda. As much as that might be a dismay, and Pirate Sheep looks like has accidentally murdered their timer. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. We at least still have the timer on Glitchwraith's side. That's correct, and we also have the official timer on Race Time GG. That's true. The race is not over until the dot done. And if you forget to put that in, you could get sniped. See, eight hearts eight... for pirate sheep. That's right, only two away from mags? That's definitely got to be on their mind. Oh... Glitchwraith was going to Kanana key that door with the whiz robes, but after the first sword shot didn't take down the red whiz robe, decided, oh, wait a minute, this is dangerous, and moved out of the way. No Kanana key there. We There's do the find sword the... cave. <laughs> That's right, they're a vanilla one. Unfortunately, we found it about 34 minutes in. No one's going to be picking up anything there. I'd still be getting a candle from there. Purchasing candles is for suckers. And people who want to route the overworld efficiently. Who would take on from a take any or buy one. So Adam, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I was playing a seed once, and it took me just about an hour to finally get a sword. 
both Wizardrobes and Lionels were on the overworld. I was starting way up in West Death Mountain. It was absolutely terrible. Um, I think the, I don't know what my worst sword time was, but I, I find that when it's like Lionels and Gorillas on the overworld and Wizardrobes in the dungeons, that's when I have the uh, worst time. And I agree with chat, I would be spending that money either on keys or with the heavy combat, I would be buying a blue ring. Especially in Pirate Cheap's case where my wallet is completely topped out. Exactly, every enemy you kill is just money wasted. Patrith is going to burn down Candle Row, and with a few more of those small secrets or medium, they'll have enough for that blue ring. That's exactly right, and here's that key purchase we were just talking about. If you're not going to buy a ring, at least buy a key or two. There are only 76 rubies. This has been a very key-starved seed. Unfortunately, it's taken its toll on our runners. So Pirate Sheep had all the money, now has three keys. Glitchwraith choosing to purchase a pack of bombs. Again, 38 rupees. I'm finding bomb bomb droppers to kill. I'm just I'm just a cheapskate. I don't know what how else to put it. <laughs> I don't think that's been a cheapskate. I think that's been economical. That's the nice way of putting it. Um and then there's uh there's a comment in chat that they would buy that uh, Max CZ would buy meat to protest veganism in Hyrule vigorously. So basically, it would just purchase the meat over and over and over again until there was no money left. I like it. Feed all the gorillas. Now, why would you give that to the gorillas? Here's level four, and it is segmented. That's right. It's up at along the river, just east of the Forgotten Spot. I find it amusing that there's a place called the Forgotten Spot when most of the time when I'm playing, it's like, well, I've forgotten this, I've forgotten that. What did I forget? I forgot this space, that space. And about 126 screens later, I have hit all the spaces that I had forgotten. Oh, unfortunate death for Pirate Sheep in level three. I also love that we call the Southwest the second forgotten spot. There are a lot of great names and for places. Bogey's Arrow. Yep, there's that magical boomerang in level 4, as foretold by the hint that Pirate Sheep purchased. And of course, Glory Tree is just you don't... <laughs> No, go ahead. And I was just going to say, of course, uh, Glitchwraith just decides to leave the scrap metal behind. Yeah, it's... It has some utility on the overworld to stun enemies, but it's Wizrobes in the dungeons, so... The Boomerang's utility, other than fetching items that you can't quite get to, uh, very low. And uh, comment in chat that Forest Color is, you didn't drink enough water. Um, and the color of level three is you are very, very cold. The color of level three just reminded me all too much of high school soccer and the Gatorade powders that they would buy. Here's a bomb wall for pirate sheep. As it looks like Glitch Wraith has found some of the lag of the internet. Good bomb on those Givdos. Didn't take any of them down, but got quite a few of them. So they gave you the 
powdered Gatorade. Did they actually give you water to go with it, or did you just have to pour it in your mouth and hope? Oh, we just had one of those five-gallon uh, coolers that we'd fill up with water and dump the powder into. That sounds fun. And by fun, I mean okay. Nice. I'm going to call that a force for pirate sheep, because it looked like it was calculated. Speaking of calculated, I think he's making a move now for the recorder. Uh, this is Glitchwraith finding the recorder. I think Pirate Sheep already has the recorder. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, sorry. It's okay. Pronouns Pirate Sheep is important. just finding all the Gibdos. One bomb, six Gibdos hit. Fairy explosion. Let's go. Finally, one of the blocks pushes. What's the item in level three? It's, it's the bow. bow. All right, and now we are in a Schrod Pirate Sheep is in Schrodinger's Go mode. Um. Well, actually, full I'm Go gonna, mode. I'm gonna claim Pirate Sheep's in full Go mode because the only thing missing is the raft, and we know the raft is on the coast. That's right. He doesn't have the bracelet, but we know that's not needed. And also, we've seen all of our dungeons, so we know the raft isn't needed either. Surprise! The raft is useless. There's still some quality of life items. I will never turn down a red ring or the any key, but definitely not required. Um, so on the red, not red ring, I will never turn down a red ring, but on the any key, if I'm in level 9 and I have like 15 or 20 keys, that's unlikely I'm going to need it. But that's, you know, one of those very crafted situations. I've had way too many nines where I start out with 10 keys and I use them all. Yeah. Well, 20 is a lot bigger than 10, though. That is true. Pirate Sheep uncorking the bow and just letting these Gibdos have it. Well, when you can do quadruple strength in your attacks, why not take advantage? So one thing I will say, that book for Glitch Wraith has come in very, very handy as every map, whereas Pirate Sheep has been bombing wall after wall after wall that have not opened. Absolutely. Although it is very interesting to see how the that advantage of having the book really hasn't translated into a Triforce advantage for Glitch Wraith. No, not a Triforce advantage, but still a bit of a knowledge advantage. However, Pirate Sheep has been closing that gap, having got the candle, and now having the Triforce at a level one. One Triforce lead for Pirate Sheep. And of course, Pirate Sheep having the bow, that is the huge advantage now. Will it be enough to overcome not having the book? I think possibly. I will say for the book, the biggest thing, well, there's the hint that the white sword is in level seven, but the biggest thing for the book is gonna be level nine. And if the map happens to be early, if the map is early in level nine, the book's values decreased quite a bit. Um, and then in chat, I see you can have 15 to 20 keys in nine. I want that seed. Notorious, I got news for you. I had a seed a while ago where I cleared level seven and ended up with like 12 keys coming out of level seven. First dungeon, went into level one and like two rooms in the any keys just on the floor because that's how this game is. So we did and see a hint team... that. The... Oh, go ahead. We did see a hint that the white sword is in seven. That is correct. White sword in level seven. Um, I noticed this dig dogger in level five. We did have a hint to play a melody to obtain the boomerang. I think that dig dogger might be hiding the boomerang, which will be the ultimate womp womp for Glitch Wraith. 
But we have to wait and see. It could also be something else. Like maybe a magical key. With being a key starved seed, I'm sure neither runner will turn down the magical key tonight. No, between both of them, they've purchased, I think, four or five keys. That's a lot. And Pirate Sheep going for a ladder clip gets it right out of the tea room. Here's a staircase in five. What's that item? Oh, it is that any key. Key problems for Glitch Wraith are gone. I don't remember which dungeon we saw the bomb upgrade. Was that in five? Uh, we saw one in level eight, and it was a hundred and way too many rupees. 112, I believe. So that would also be a nice solution to the 38 bombs. It almost pays for Honestly, itself. Honestly, that... That would be good. Look at level 7. Look at these holes in the map. As uh, Pirate Sheep has got the map for level 4. A quick shout out to UX subscribing with Prime for 68 months. Thanks for subscribing, Seiryu. Without you and others like you, Speed Gaming just would need more help. Speaking of shout outs, let's give a huge shout out to both of our runners tonight. They've been putting on a great show for us. Be sure to give Pirate Sheep and Glitch Wraith a follow. Same with Camion and my co commentator, JBX Adam. Don't waste your follows subscribing, uh, following me, because I never stream. Ha! I will raise you that never stream with an I never stream. Ha ha! And speaking of things to never have to deal with, look at all of these blue dark nuts in level four. Not nice. Oh, Pirate Sheep tried the machine gun arrow through the Gibdos. Unfortunately, takes a little Gibdo hug, two hearts of damage. Back to start he goes. So, and Chad, if you aren't following that... Uh, oh, go ahead, Proc. My, my apologies. No, I was just going to say that Glitch Wraith also decided to take a hug from a Gibdo. Gibdos are not friendly. Do not hug them. Uh, I was just going to tell Chad, if they weren't following all that not streaming stuff, basically that means follow our tracker because trackers are the MVPs. And if you want to see one of the comms crew streaming, uh, the tracker is your only hope. Nice double bomb dig dogger kill by Glitch Wraith. Moving on in level seven. Compass for pirate sheep in level four. A good find. It'll let you know if you have to take out any of the large dark nut rooms. And we see Gleok returns with the boomerang. The wooden boomerang is in level eight. So it looked like pirate sheep almost full cleared this four. What he was a uh, key blocked to the north in the L column. That must be where our item is. Wait, no, we saw it in a dun in a staircase earlier. Never mind. Yeah, it might be the heart container that's up there. And to be honest, two more heart containers for pirate sheep, and the magical sword could be his. Glitch Wraith finds the diamond staircase in level 7 and has picked up the white sword. And immediately hugs a Gibdo in celebration. Back to start, Glitch Wraith goes. And Pirate Sheep finds what I believe is their last take any?
that's possible if they haven't gotten any other if pirate sheep hasn't found any other heart containers besides the two in level two that would that then the math would check out and that would be the last take any pirate sheep is now in level eight Wraith is back in level three. This would be a really good play for Glitchwraith as it, he may not know it yet, but the bow is located inside. Yep, here's the Triforce Glitchwraith going past the Triforce as expected, continuing to hunt the item in level three. The Trath has no bombs, so unfortunately can't refill them. Where's level 2 with all the bomb drops when you need it? That was shoot room to shoot room in level 8. That could be an interesting route to the Triforce. Looks like Pirate Sheep is doing what I would do and just routing straight towards the Triforce. Manhandle it in a shutter door. No bombs. We're arrows away. Down goes Manhandle it. Good job. What awaits in the Triforce room? It's just the Triforce on the ground. Level 8 Triforce for Pirate Sheep. Feeling that Pirate Sheep really wants that game three. I think so. I mean, honestly, if Pirate Sheep doesn't want a game three, I'd have questions as to why. I do have one suspicion. Probably does not want to hear my commentary ever again. Nah, you're doing fine, Proc. We appreciate having you up here on commentary. Chat really appreciates it, because otherwise, chat would just be listening to me. And for our chat, if you want to take a more active part in the Zelda 1 randomizer community, we are always looking for commentators, trackers, and restreamers. Please volunteer in the Z1R Discord. There's the Triforce out of level six for Pirate Sheep. All of a sudden, uh, six to four Triforce lead. Also, Pirate Sheep does know where level four, level seven, and I believe level nine are. Might just be on a quest to Triforce and go until the game makes, uh, makes them stop. That is unfortunate. Glistrath has grabbed the Triforce from level 3 and has moved on, not realizing the bow awaits there. Though I anticipate should Glitchwraith get into cleanup mode, level 3 is the first level or second level. Well, no, level 2, level 3 will be the first levels that Glitchwraith goes back to. I'm not certain Glitchwraith saw the... Uh, second heart container in level two. That is correct. He did not. And we still have no idea what's in six. Well, for pirate sheep, it's jets. Level four Triforce for pirate sheep. Continuing cleanup as Glitchwraith is in level six. Maybe we will find that item on this trek. Pirate Sheep moving with like a link on a mission heading directly to level 7. 
if they dig, then they'll find their white sword, which, being one away from mags, is probably low on mind. But if they find that heart container first, I can definitely see a mags play coming. Absolutely. Mags on wood sword is a very large upgrade. Mags on white sword, depending on how comfortable you are with your combat, not as important. And if we remember, Mags was only two screens away from level three, so that could just be a quick recorder away. And chat, at Atorius pointing out that keys could be a problem for pirate sheep. Keys are definitely a problem for pirate sheep. Despawning things, hoping to get something. Oh, could a Kanana keyed that door, pirate sheep? Pirate sheep just no, no time for Kanana keys. We're just going, going, going. Yeah, I usually don't realize that you can Kanana key a room until about a half second after the doors open. It's a mindset. You just kind, of, you, you have to have the mindset for it. And that's not to say anything bad about anyone who's playing in this, because quite frankly, even with the mindset, you can be like laser focused. Like right now, I guarantee the thoughts going through Pirate Sheep's mind are Triforce and go, Triforce and go, Triforce and go. Game three, I want game three. Like right here, being able to leave the room to despawn the Dig Doggers. This is just the transport. Uh, the white sword, I believe, is in a diamond staircase. We didn't actually see it as there was a little bit of lag on Glitch Wraith's side. However, we did see the hint for it. And after uh, walking through the uh, room and the lag clearing up, we did see that uh, Glitch Wraith had the Triforce. Left is the white sword from where Pirate Chief is now. Taking a U-turn, having seen the compass and the location of the Triforce. And I'm being told that that locked room was already seen. It was just above start. That shows how much attention I'm paying to the race. That just shows how focused you are in giving Chad a good time. And by good time, I forgot to tell chat to be counting all the mistakes that I make because that's a fun game we can also play is how many times will JX mess up this comms? Oh, look at this. Triforce had a level seven for pirate sheep. That Triforce is Goma blocked. That is very interesting. So we know that Glitch Wraith, if nothing else, will start diving back into previous dungeons by the time they get to the end of seven. All right, so Adam. Torio saying that he can't count that high. Oh no. I'm gonna guess that Atorios plays, uh, plays Z1R and can't even count to 10. So I am safe. <coughs> Here's the wand in level six for Glitch Wraith, a good find, but not the bow that he was seeking. That's right, and Pirate Sheep is just about to enter 9 at 58 minutes and some, well, 57 something. 57 something, close enough. We'll call it 5740, just, just because we can. Yeah. Uh-oh, and there's whiz ropes in here. Whiz ropes, ropes, gibdos, not fun so far. And unfortunately, no instant piggy. Wood sword, two keys, and a dream chat. Wood sword, two keys, no ring, and a dream. That's what Pirate Jeep has right now, and quite frankly, is making progress in level 9. That's right. Now, Pirate Sheep is looking for two things in particular along this journey through Nine. They are looking for the roar of Ganon and also a door. Ganon is a very noisy neighbor and he likes to cause trouble for his neighbors. So you can always hear him when you are one room away to the north, south, east, or west. 
and you're also looking for a room with a single shutter door that will not open after the enemies are cleared, or if you have already defeated Ganon, will automatically open regardless of how many enemies there are. The one exception can be if Ganon's room has more than one shutter door, any one of them could lead to the kidnapped. Absolutely, and we see Pirate Sheep has found a compass, so doing my strat of, I've got a compass, I'm finding my path, there is the door right there, uh, but no Ganon nearby. That is a very short path from start. Which means that as soon as we have bacon, it'll be a quick up and A for Pirate Sheep. Yeah, one thing to note, Pirate Sheep only has 17 rupees and is relying on these silver arrows for combat. Needs to be a little aware that you have to have at least one rupee to beat Ganon. Oh! Unfortunately, takes a red Wizro beam to the face. Back to start he goes. Yeah, 17 rupees, two keys, one bomb. This is very much a dream. And no map, but we but we do have the compass, and we do have quite a bit of skill being here in the Rookie Rumble, so it can go any way. Plus, we have a lot of time. As you can see, Glitch Ray still in level 8, needs Triforces out of 4, 7, and 8 to even be eligible to enter to level 9. And they still have to go back to level 3 to pick up the bow. The one thing that's nice about that, and nice is in very big quotation marks, that will be apparent as soon as the Triforce is located in level 7 via compass, because the Triforce in level 7 is Goma blocked. And we see Glitchwraith picking up their ninth heart container, one away from possible mags acquisition. Although with wand and white sword, that is much lower priority for Glitchwraith. Absolutely. And pirate sheep out of bombs. Two keys. Needs a little bit of help from the drops. Bombs in the corner, we'll take those. The game giveth. Oh, this game be a stingy mistress she, if you want to call the game a she. Giveth and taketh quite a bit. Well, it is the Legend of Zelda. Speaking of which, is there any hype in the chat for Echoes of Wisdom, the new Zelda game that was announced just recently? Yes. Yes, there is hype in the chat. It, that, that's a... So, asking a Zelda chat if there's hype in the chat for a new Zelda game <laughs> is like asking a Metroid chat if there's hype about Prime 4. You are just guaranteed that everyone is hype. I hear a roar on Pirate Sheep's side. So I also I. see all the blue wizards in the world too and we know it's not up from here because pirate sheep was above this room so we'll see if it can bomb down and we see glitch wraith continuing here in level eight digging looking for the bow uh let's see will we pick up the bomb upgrade looks like we're dropping a bomb before picking it up Maybe, 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 no. No, maybe they're still holding out for blue ring. Maybe, I, I just look at it as the bombs are 38 rupees a pack. That bomb upgrade is basically the equivalent of just refilling my bombs. Ooh, another Gift hug, hug for pirate sheep. Stop. 
statement in chat. Ganon wants you to die before finding him. Yes, Ganon does not want to be found. You know, with that in mind, I'm sure if Ganon really wanted to try, we would have seen a lot more four-headed Gleox in this seed. I agree with this move by Pirate Sheep. Any room that I can kill that's got a bubble in it, if I'm not leaving this dungeon, I want to take it out just because that bubble will keep the room taken out until Pirate Sheep exits the dungeon. Like right here, I would exit and despawn this Wizrobe even if I could pull the clip off just because I'd want that room to only be bubbles when I came back through it. Yep, bubbles will do that, traps will do that. The rare push block in a stair room, but that does exist. In an open stair room, I mean. Pirate Sheep is on beeps chats while still trying to find that path to Ganon. We know that they have to come from the south side. Gonna potion up before popping out of the stair, knowing blue whiz robes await. And that bomb hole. Oh, go ahead. Call it. Yeah, out of one hour, five minutes, and 40 some seconds, here's Ganon. With the wood sword, it's going to take an astonishing 16, uh, or is it 15 hits? 15, 15 hits. Our sheep does have oh. a Pepsi, but with green tunic, one high wheel driver is enough to send him back to beginning. That was unfortunate. Had a decent stun lock going, and then unfortunately took a little Ganon hug and back to start. In the meantime, Glitchwraith, oh, takes down the Manhandler, but gets sniped by a Beemos. That Manhandler will be back. And the internet, and the tubes of the internet are clogged. We have no streams. We'll just have to use our imagination that Pirate Sheep is going back to Ganon, blue potion in hand. Although, seeing that they only have three hearts right now, that's going to be a very tough fight indeed. It's going to be hard just getting to Ganon when you consider you pop out into this mess of blue whiz robes. Oh yes, I would use all my bombs to try and take out at least a few of them, just in case I had to come back again expertly avoids the blue whiz robes. Blue potion though, potioning up right away. One hug from Ganon, four hearts. One fireball from Ganon, I think is too many hearts. Oh, we already have taken a Ganon hug. Many. Two Ganon hugs. Any hit now will take Pirate Sheep down. Oh no. No more potion left, Malkior. It's just a piece of paper that we can't drink. <laughs> And Pirate Sheep and ditches out yeah, of nine. Gonna, gonna leave, gonna probably, well, doesn't have the money for potions. Maybe gonna go hit a fairy fountain and come back. Now, I do believe there is a casino really close to where we started. We may see some casino strats coming in. That wouldn't be a bad idea to cas do some casino strats. Get yourself some bombs, get yourself... You know, something. Well, bombs, not as important because the path to Ganon is clear other than the enemies that'll be along the way. Right, but if you can buy a red potion, that would be huge. And we are gambling. All right, first one, Team Middle, plus 14.
Plus now, 14 pro strat. team middle coming through slow, but sure. And mags would definitely be huge. I do not think Pirate Sheep has an overworld heart remaining, though. I don't think I... so either. Pro strat would be to save right now and then go back to that casino with your 46 in hand. Just getting a blue potion. Interesting thought. That red potion was only 10 rupees away. I won't argue with it, but I will say, and okay, confusion. Yeah, it almost looked like he was headed back to the casino again. But no, I think we're seeing a, a move directly to the waterfall with blue. We're gonna go right back hand. to we're nine. Gonna... Yep. Yeah. Oh boy. Malkier is right. It would have been really great to save right before making this trek to nine. That way you could save with that blue potion. Unfortunately, Glitrath is still frozen. And it looks like both of our streams are frozen at this time. So Adam will beat this be the magical one, the final round against the boss pig. Maybe. It's not an easy fight on wood sword. Especially with green tunic. Nine hearts. We've seen how devastating those drivers can be. Honestly, depending on how bad I'm feeling, I I still think that blue ring big biggest thing here. Mags, of course, would be huge because it would take this fight from 15 shots to 4 shots. A hug needs a stun lock. Five, six. We're working on a stun seven, lock. We've got eight, it. Can we hold it? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, we have we stun lock. Have we have bacon crumble. That was some confidence right there. That is some extreme confidence, doing that on two hearts. Wow, and we don't have any idea where Glitch Wraith is at. Gotta be somewhere. We've just completely lost that stream. It's gonna, I anticipate though, with how far behind Glitch Wraith is and with Pirate Sheep having a path, this is all but a done deal. However, only two rupees left. Oh, we've seen I like the path picking to that the up. Kidnap. Oh, absolutely. We know that this next room will have a door to the kidnapped. Everyone, yep. get out your GGs for the pirate sheep, winner of game two. With an official race time GG time of one hour, 12 minutes and 55 seconds. And while we're getting out our GGs, get out your GGs for Glitch Wraith, who, seeing the finish, has thrown in the towel, called up, blown the white flag, thrown in the DNF, and we are joined by our race winner, the Pirate Sheep. Arg Sheep Boy. How's it going? I should say Sheep Man. Um, oh my goodness. Talk about technical difficulties, a hard seed. Oh man. Yeah, we we saw that pause on your emulator. What happened? I was writing down notes. I hit apparently the pause button, and then I had no idea what the pause button was. So I had to like go into settings, reset a pause button to unpause it, 
that made me lose control of my controller too, so I couldn't up A for the rest of the run for some reason. It was it was a struggle bus. Oh. L, you still managed to do such a great job with oh. that seed, and we are joined by our runner-up Glitch Wraith. GG's Glitch Wraith. GG's Glitch. Hey, thank you. GG's. <sighs> It's been a long so, time in these flag sets for taking on Ganon with green tunic, wood sword, <laughs> no potion. And That's already... right, unfortunate. Oh, go ahead, Frog. Yeah, unfortunately, money was not very kind in this seed, and the keys were even less kind. <sighs> I'm I'm glad to look at the tracker right now and see that there wasn't just a bunch of items picked up everywhere because I, I have no item knowledge of five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Sorry. So, I didn't help the tracker much. It, you did fine. It's okay. You don't have to pick up items to beat the game. You only need a bow, silver arrows, a wood sword, and a dream. That's pretty much all I had. Uh, one of the things that we saw early was, uh, Glitch, you came across the book in level eight, and I think that that was a huge early game advantage because uh, Pirate Sheep, I believe you were bombing every wall in every dungeon, having oh, no yeah. maps. Yep. Yeah, that definitely, it was an advantage. I felt pretty good when I found the book, and um, I mean, it at least helped with bombs. Resource management was tough in this seed, and it seemed like Every time I try to dip into a dungeon that I thought was going to be beneficial, uh, I just kept getting combat blocked, so... Yeah, I've, I've found the same thing. Um, I Obviously, we had silvers under the Armos. I got the hint that the bow was in three, and it was behind, I think, two locked doors, a ladder block, a couple of bomb walls, and without... I never found, like I said, no... no White Sword, I, I face tank three just to get any combat advantage in this seed. Because I remembered game one how much the combat advantage helped. And I wasn't taking any chances this time. So, let's see. Uh, turning points of the seed. I think um, as soon as you had the bow pirate you decided okay that's it i'm just going and try forcing out on everything yeah that about it was, right it was getting to i think i got it about 40 45 minutes and i was having flashbacks to yesterday's game where it was lightning fast i took a i didn't get a candle till like 22 minutes because i was greedy and took a heart and so i was in the i, I had the mindset that it was like glitch was way ahead so i think in a span of about three or four minutes i grabbed triforce out of five six seven and eight because they were all decently close and just took a gamble on it and and that gamble continued in time taking deaths to ganon several times oh. needing to go out low money and i think you gambled to get a potion I, I gambled twice and hit the massive plus 14 um, just to get one potion, ran into a blue gorilla so I could die and save, and then just took it in there. I, I, I looked over at race time and just expected it as soon as, as soon as humanly possible. I thought it was going to be over quick. Yeah, unfortunately, I think, and we'll go to glitch for this one, uh, you I think you were getting combat blocked in almost every dungeon. I'm sure you were relieved to find the White Sword in 7. Yeah, you know, I thought that White Sword was going to be more of a help. Um, and then I think shortly after that, then I came across the wand. And, you know, I was feeling a little better. And tonight, for whatever reason, my, my combat just kept letting me down. And I hit a point where, you know, I, I figured 2 and 3 had to be the dungeons to dig and i just i had no answers i i kept dying in there so i figured that 
I figured Pirate Sheep was not far from finishing, so there was a point where I was just expecting expecting to see that in race time. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I think happens to a lot of runners. Uh, you just get in the mindset of you find a you'll find an item that maybe you find it later, like with Pirate Sheep getting the candle at like 22 minutes in because of taking a heart, and you think, oh man, if I'd taken this candle, I could have burned all these bushes, and all of these amazing things could have happened. But often, what I find is that whatever I'm fearing, my the other runners are doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah don't no, think, I, I don't think Glitch was too greedy. I think he probably took the candle from the take any right around start. I did. I did. I We were close enough to a lot of stuff to burn that um, I knew that I was going to kick myself if I didn't take that candle. So I, I had this game plan of grab the coast heart, and then since we started uh, kind of north, just do the entire north section, including Death Mountain. And then I'm bound to run into a candle shop at some point. Narrator, he did not. <laughs> so the closest candle shop for you, Pirate Sheep, was actually at 1Q2. One 1Q2. One okay. Yeah, I, I died going to that screen. So that was orphaned for a while. Yeah. That's just how it goes. Um... As I was saying on the whole, my opponent's always doing the right thing. I'm always doing the wrong thing. I I find that from a lot of runners. It's just a, it's a mindset to avoid because most likely your opponents are making similar mistakes. Like in this particular case, Glitch, you bailed on level 3. That just happened to be where the bow was. Had you have continued there, you might not have found the white sword or the wand because you might not have been digging 6 and 7. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think the the first time I dipped into three, um, I think I was bomb blocked. I knew that that had to be a bomb wall um, to continue heading north, but uh, then I came back and I think at that point I was kind of combat blocked and it fortunately led me to dig seven as soon as I got that hint. And But unfortunately, that combat just didn't help out tonight. Did you have the sword or the, the ladder when you went back in into three? Yeah, so I got oh, I got wow. the ladder pretty early on. I got it at about sixteen minutes. It looks like um, I I think at that point I had kind of run out of some stuff to explore, so I just went over toward Vanilla Start and found one under the burn bush there. For a long time, it did look like Glitch Wraith was having the exploration advantage with the magic key, with the book, and with that early candle. But, you know, mad props to you, Pirate Sheep. You got the first combat upgrades, and then you started just flying from there. Yeah, I, I knew I'd be behind on exploration. And I, I've, I don't think I've ever finished a, a seed with such little information. But it just, it, I, it's it's the stress from like yesterday's game that carried over. Like I was expecting a sub hour run out of both of us again. Couldn't take any chances. That's fully what I was thinking too. I I thought I was behind the entire time. I I got into nine at about the hour mark, and I think I died to Ganon or on the way to Ganon six times. Yeah, level 9 wasn't friendly. Um, I know, Glitch, you didn't see it, but there's whiz robes in level 9. <laughs> so, sounds like it would have been just like the fun I was having in 2 and 3 then. Yeah, if he, I was able to find like a staircase to a staircase to a staircase to get in, which are all pretty quick su succession, but the staircase into Ganon had blue whiz robes. I think every staircase room had either Wizrobes or Gurias. It was it was tough to get there on on no no defense. But it was I, I missed our I I was very sad it wasn't yesterday's three or yesterday's nine. <laughs> so one thing I will say, uh 
pirate, I don't know if you noticed, but there, when you went into Ganon's room, you bombed in from the north, and there were no other doors. I so. yeah, I I tried to bomb. I tried to go right out of that staircase. Couldn't go down from there. It was on the bottom row. It was two away from start. So yeah, I didn't think there's unless there's going to be some other magic staircase that went just to the left of it. I think that was the only way in. Yeah, that might have been the only way in, and and that was it was a path and a half to get there, and. I know the first time you popped out of that staircase, those blue wizard robes gave you the business. Yeah, I, I heard the roar, I saw an open door, I ran, and then I was sad, because it was the wrong way. So, both of you, game three tomorrow night, same bat time, possibly a different bat channel. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I think uh, if I could nominate uh, Kami and Renekai to uh, roll our seed again like game one, I, that would be perfect. Oh, you don't like my seed? I see how it is. <laughs> it, uh, it it wasn't my favorite. I did like game one better. Well, game three will be tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern and has yet to have a channel scheduled. So everyone out in chat, if you've got your Game 3 hype out for this matchup, be watching the Speed Gaming schedule for when this gets when that game gets scheduled for Restream. It'll be fun regardless. Half hour seed, 90 minute seed, I'll take any of them. I've seen a four hour seed before, would you like one of those? I think I may quit. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Did either of you have any final thoughts on this seed? I think this is just a seed that I'm happy to be done with. I don't. Uh, I don't see any need to go back and further explore after the, the game is over now. So on to the next one. Just give me some money, game. Money solves all the problems. <laughs> uh, this this seed didn't seem like the worst money seed, but it seemed like all the large secrets were clustered together. So you got them one, two, three, and the door pairs were like 22. So you guys were low on money. Uh, Pirate Chief, I know you bought three keys. Glitch, how many keys did you buy? I saw at least one key purchase. I think I bought two back to back at one point. That was when I wanted to go back and dig one, I believe. Um, either one or two. So. Yeah, six key purchases this seed between the two runners. <laughs> so that that eats up the money right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Proc, did you have any final thoughts on this seed? No, I just appreciate both of you sticking through it. And giving us a great show, giving us, you know, a lot of aspirations as rookies in the Rookie Rumble. Of course, a lot of hard work and time dedication has gone into preparing for this tournament. We just appreciate you putting yourself out there and participating. Here, here to that. Without runners entering these tournaments, we don't have games to broadcast. And so I think that's going to actually bring us to a close of tonight's episode. I just want to do a few shout outs first. Chat, if you're not already following these runners, please take a moment and give these runners a follow. The follow costs you nothing and it shows our runners great support. Also, you can show up in their channels and you can ask them questions and I'm sure they will ignore you much like, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm sure they're very inviting in their channels. Um, you can also choose to follow the other members of the commentary crew, uh, Proc and Kami and Rinnekai. Uh, I've been told Proc doesn't scream, but I saw Pedantic Potato out there somewhere. I'm sure Pedantic can convince Proc to scream a little more. Um, and I'd also like to shout out a thank you to Speed Gaming and the Speed Gaming family of networks. Thank you for allowing us to restream on your channels. Without having a restream channel, we would, wouldn't be up here for anyone. So, chat, once again, thank you for joining us. On behalf of the race crew and our racers, I have been JXB Adam, 
and I wish you all a good night.